Thank you for joining us today. Today we're going to premiere five compositions by five emerging composers. We did not make it easy for them when we asked them to write these uh, compositions because of three reasons. First, we asked them to write uh, a piece of music that incorporates not one but five different Filipino and American folk songs. And second, we asked them to write only a minute in duration. And third, we asked them to incorporate uh, traditional Western orchestral instruments as well as Philippine indigenous instruments. My name is Louis Ramos. I'm an arranger composer based in Los Angeles, California, and I'm also the arranger in residence of the Filipino American Symphony Orchestra, or FASO, and I also run FASO's education and outreach program. So, where did we come up with this project? So, one day, my daughter came up to me and said, hey, you got to see this video on YouTube. And I looked at it, and it was uh, David Bruce's video on the Five Composers, One Theme project. And I thought, hey, we could do something like that. You know, we could, um, we could invite Filipino, American composers. And the, the, the difference or the twist that we had was that, you know, we'd ask them to incorporate... Um, Filipino and American folk songs. And the other twist is that we could introduce some Philippine indigenous instruments in the instrumentation. Uh, and it was a perfect project for us at FASO because we are all, all about um, promoting Filipino music as well as promoting emerging Filipino composers. So who are these five composers? So first we have Nilo Alcala. He's a composer, conductor, arranger. He's currently based in the Philippines, and he's a very prolific choral arranger. Many of his pieces have been performed in competitions all over the world, and he's also known to be the first Filipino to have been commissioned by the LA Master Chorale. Second, we have Jem Talarok. He was born and raised in Bukidnon, a province in the south of the country. Philippines, and he is an advocate for Philippine music, particularly music of indigenous people. Third, we have Melissa Orquiza. She's a Los Angeles-based composer, arranger, and musician. She currently works for uh, Walt Disney Studios as an arranger, and she, you know, her most recent works include Lion King and Frozen 2. Fourth, we have Nick Passis. So, Nick Passis is a Filipino-American composer, arranger, and pianist. He's based in Tampa, Florida. Uh, he is a legend uh, among uh, singers, uh, cho choral singers in the Philippines. Everybody knows him. He's a musical director of Anklung Ensemble. So, Anklung is uh, one of these indigenous uh, instruments. Um, and fifth but not least, we have Sander Choi. Uh, he's a Los Angeles-based Filipino composer, arranger, orchestrator, music director, and a session vocalist. Uh, he's another very prolific writer of choral music uh, with many, many published works. He has written arrangements for many orchestras, including FASO, the ABS-CBN, Philharmonic, and has written orchestrations for Lea Salonga's concerts. Uh, he has an advocacy in Philippine choral music. Since we're a Filipino-American orchestra, we decided to use a mix of Filipino and American folk songs. Bahay Kubo or Nipahat Bahay Kubo is a quaint house made of bamboo and palm leaves. The song describes Philippine farm life focusing on various vegetables. In a sense, it is analogous to the song, Old MacDonald Had a Farm. Leron Leron Sinta, or My Dear Leron. It's a popular Filipino folk song from the Tagalog region. Traditionally a work song of those working in the fields harvesting fruits. Because of its catchy tune, it is often presented as a children's song. Old MacDonald Had a Farm or ang bukid ni Tandang McDonald. 
you know, probably the most popular American nursery rhyme. The song is about a farmer and the various animals that he keeps. Atin ko pong sing sing, or I had a ring. This song is about a woman who lost her ring and offers her love as a prize for the man who finds it. It kind of sounds like Cinderella, doesn't it? But instead of losing a shoe, she lost a ring. Faso theme is the official Faso theme. It consists of the two notes Fa and So. The basic instrumentation consisted of a string quartet, a contrabass, flute, French horn, and harp. Some of the pieces had additional instruments, including the vibraphone, xylophone, and piano. It's not a full orchestra, but all the orchestral families are represented, the string, wind, and brass. Rounding out the instrumentation is an indigenous Philippine instrument, the kolintang. It is an instrument that's played mostly in Mindanao, in the south of the Philippines. It's a pitched percussion instrument consisting of a row of gong kettles. I'm very excited to see how the composers will be able to get Western and Southeast Asian instruments to work together. Due to the pandemic, we were unable to bring the musicians together in one room in order to do the recording. And so we recorded it virtually. So each musician did their own recording at home, and then we mixed it, uh, both the audio and the video. Uh, special thanks to our musical director, Bob Schroeder, for overseeing the recording as well as the, the mixing. And so I think now we're very excited to hear our first composition by Nick Ramiro Passis. Hi, my name is Nick Ramiro Passis, and I'm a composer arranger from Tampa, Florida. And I'm so honored to be part of this exciting project. And when I got the invitation from Louis and the Philippine American Symphony Orchestra, I said yes right away. So uh, the title that I came up with is called a Five in One, pertaining to the five tunes that I had to merge together into one uh, cohesive composition, uh, or five songs that I had to merge into one minute, however you look at it. It's difficult to look for a style where you put all those tunes together in one minute. I came up with a solution which is to use an upbeat style, which is simple and easy to understand and where the themes and the deconstructions thereof would be easily identifiable. So my main melody is a combination of Atin Kupong Sing Sing and Bahay Kubo. And Bahay Kubo. Which became like this. And so on. At the same time, the faso is playing two notes. Actually, the horn starts it. Uh, just fa and so in the key of F, which is the faso theme. And it's acting like a two-note pulsation that comes in and out of the composition at some point. Uh, the contrabass, uh, I used the uh, Old MacDonald header farm as the bass line, which I syncopated. and so on. The best way to enjoy it is to actually listen to it. So I hope you enjoy it. And thank you for the opportunity.
Ooh. That sounds so smooth. Nice pop feels. Beautiful. Wow, that sounds so hopeful and cheerful. Very jazzy. Mr. C right there. At the entrance of the Kulintang there. I feel so relaxed. Oh, I love, I love all the layering. So. Very Gershwin-like. Oh, yeah, very nice build-up. <laughs> wow. Whew. That was amazing. Lovely. Lovely. Wow, that's cool. Oh, lovely ending. That's really fun. I mean, I did not expect any less. I mean, this is Sir Nick Passis we're talking about. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I expected to be amazed and I wasn't disappointed. And I just wish that I have Sir Nick's... Uh, Harmonic language, his grasp of the harmonic language is very eclectic. Uh, something that I just, I can only wish I could write. Uh, the other thing I love about it is that um, the, the, the melodies are happening at the same time, you know, in perfect counterpoint with each other. All these tunes, uh, these, the Bahay Kubo, Ating Kupung Sing Sing, they all happen at the same time. Very ingenious way of using counterpoint. So... Amazing. And also, in, in general, it's very lighthearted and it's something that I can listen to over and over again. Thank you, Nick. There were two highlights for me in your composition. The first is the, the mashup of those four melodies. When I listened to it for the first time, I didn't even realize that you were mashing it up until I was reading the score while I was listening to it. And that's an incredible testament on the way you are able to seamlessly mash up those four melodies. The second highlight for me is your bass line. Um, you were able to turn the, the melody for Old MacDonald into a bass line. That's very unusual. It's very new for me. Um, typically, when you take a, a melody, you use it for either for the main line or a counter line, or you do some alterations to the melody. But I've never seen anything used for a bass line. It really worked very well. If you isolate that uh, bass line that you did uh, with a syncopation, it actually gives a, a Motown kind of feel to it. So I thought it was really cool. So congratulations. Well, up next is uh, Nilo Alcala. Hi, I'm Nilo Alcala. And for Sari Saring Panaginip One in Wonderland, my concept was to mish and mash small fragments from these five songs and put them together in a very surreal dream, a very absurd, surreal dream, as if um, Juan becomes Alice in Wonderland and Wonderland could be America itself. And for someone who's new in, in America, not everything makes sense. Um, things can be weird, absurd, and you know, just like a typical dream where you don't understand everything. So for this piece, I deliberately veered away from pleasantries and from consonants. So I aimed for this sound that is absurd, yet somewhat comical at the same time. And uh, just like a dream sequence uh, where one dream or thought would jump from one place to the next, you would hear fragments of the music all over the place, but then it's held together by one dream. So here's Sari Saring Panaginip, Juan in Wonderland.
straight to the point. Ooh, lovely. Atin ko pong sisi. Nice. Gorgeous. It almost sounds like uh, Sondheim. Oh, I love this. Vibraphone. I didn't even know that vibraphone was on the table for us to use. I love the playfulness. It sort of feels like a waltz, but it's really not. I can hear fragments of the melody though. It's brilliant. Love this part. This, this is my jam right here. This, you know, Nilo Alcala is in my playlist. <laughs> uh, I don't even know what I'm doing here with you guys. Um, it kind of feels like there's the rich harmonies of Debussy combined with the eccentric and ambiguous rhythm of Stravinsky. It's perfectly combined together. And it kind of provides us a, a fresh and interesting perspective on our very own folk songs. And I just feel very privilege to be one of the first to hear this. Uh, but I loved that part where the oscillation between the vibes and the harps and the piano, especially the three against two part, that was very, very nice. But, you know, the first thought definitely very Stravinsky inspired here. But very cool, very cool piece, very exciting. It's, it's, it's wonderful how many things you can do in a minute, isn't it? I really like this um, Sari Saring Panagini by uh, Nilo Alcala. Um, I had the pleasure of uh, playing the piano part in here, so I heard this way ahead instead of uh, listening it for the first time. Way to go, Nilo. I really like what you did with this one and um, how you were able to utilize all the themes. Wow, that really took me for a trip. Neil, that's great work, very effective writing. Up next is Jem Talarok. So I ended up working on this piece longer than I initially planned because, um, as it turned out, it's really hard to, to cram five beloved tunes into a one-minute piece. So, and, and if I were to give away the, the tunes in its recognizable forms, I would need a little bit, of, a little bit more than 60 seconds to do that. Uh, but then I thought, uh, this is precisely why having limits forces one to be creative. So instead of having each of the, the, these folk songs play out successively in a medley fashion, I decided to do a more motivic approach. And, and I divided my one minute into four different sections with varying textures. And I would sprinkle onto those um, sections little motifs derived from the given folk songs. So I basically just made an entirely new composition and that's filled with hints and clues to the actual tunes without giving them away right off the bat. Hence the title Limang Piraso, or five pieces referring to the small pieces of a whole. And it could also mean five musical pieces if you like. For example, uh, in Bahay Kubo, I used the motive Ay Kubo Kahit Punti Tan, ta, tan, 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 ta, tan. I used those sequence of notes and used a slightly syncopated rhythm. And, but, but more importantly, um, the motive that you'll most likely hear in this piece repeatedly is the two note combination of da, da, or the fa, so, which is derived from the fa, so theme composed by none other than Sir Louis Ramos. And finally, I had the kulintang to work with. Um, what to do with the kulintang? Um, I immediately decided that the kulintang can never be relegated to the background. Uh, it is, after all, one of the most respected and well-documented music cultures in the Philippines, if not the world. And I thought she had to be unshackled and left to do what she does best. So knowing that most authentic kulintang music are improvised, I had to remain true to that. So I allotted one section 
for a solo kulintang, uh, just to put her in the forefront, uh, even if it's the last few bars. And most of it is improvisatory in nature, apart from the few suggested notes that I put. Therefore, I use a little uh, aleatoric technique there. So that's it. Uh, I hope you enjoy this little mess of a piece. of the pizzicato and the plucked harp. Uh-huh. Ooh, I love that, that expansiveness. Okay, Bahai Kubo themes. Luscious strings. I think for poem sings. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ooh, gorgeous textures. Wow, look at that kolintang. I like that. Nice. A lot of faso here. Oh, I like this. What really strikes me about this one is how nicely the kulintang part has been written. And it also says in the piece that the kulintang can improvise. I didn't think of that. That I had a I had a hard time writing for kulintang because I'm not really familiar with notation of that instrument. And the harp, the harp, I really like how he wrote that harp part. It almost sounds like surreal, this piece. Way to go, Jem. I really like it. That was very picturesque and colorful. When Bob and I listened to it, we sort of came up with this scene uh, that we imagined when we heard the music of a boy riding a bicycle delivering newspapers. So great work on your composition. Now, up next is Melissa Orquiza. Hello, my name is Melissa Orquiza, and I am so grateful to be a part of this illustrious group. I hope you've enjoyed the presented compositions and hopefully it has inspired you to take your own art onto another level. My late Lola from Kabyao was a pianist who loved tangos. The Faso Tango is a tripartite composition utilizing Filipino folk songs in a transparent manner. As a tribute to the multicultural aspect of Faso, the Filipino American Symphony Orchestra, a conjunct iteration of Old MacDonald and the Faso theme composed by Faso composer in resonance, Luis Ramos, commissioned by conductor and musical director, Robert Schroeder, is utilized as transitional material between the tripartite structure. The ending section is a fugue encompassing all three folk songs as a cultural tribute, as well as an intellectual counterpoint exercise, satisfying my need for intellectual coherence in conjunction with passion. Thank you for listening and enjoy.
the intro. I really like how high those violin and one and two are. This makes me want to dance. Oh, it's o- it almost gives me mariachi vibes. That high string sound. This one makes you happy. <laughs> It's seamless. Pretty straightforward setting of the themes. I thought of the melodies themselves. Her orchestration sounds full. Single section. <laughs> Each song is different, a different place, a different emotion. It's like a roller coaster, right? My favorite part. That one was very pretty and uh, it felt like a Disney ride or something and, and it felt <laughs> I don't know what else to say. It makes it makes you happy. This right here is, I think, how you should show off the Filipino folk song. You know, you show it in all its beauty, in all its grandeur. But most importantly, it has heart and the lighthearted disposition of the Filipino. You know, it's very beautiful. Um, and what I appreciate about this orchestration, uh, and Melissa's orchestration, is how full she made the the ensemble sound um, with just these six instruments. It, it really sounded like uh, there were more instruments than, than what was written for, which is, you know, testament to really, really good orchestration. Um, very nice. <laughs> Excellent work on mashing up those three melodies. Up next is Sonder Choi. So, unlike the other composers, I only used one theme for my um, work, my one-minute work. Um, I am very economical. I tend to be very economical when I compose. I like smaller themes, smaller ideas, and expanding on those ideas. You know, similar to, and you think of Beethoven's Fifth, for example, um, the first movement of Beethoven's fifth where, where he only used that ba 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 bum and then he built a whole movement based on those four notes in this case i used the bahai kubo theme the ba 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 bum uh first four notes of that piece but i inverted it so it's ba 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 bum i didn't really want the themes from the folk songs to be generally recognized, but rather I wanted my work to be inspired by them. Uh, I l- love the color of the kulintang and the harp together. Um, sort of my first time doing something like this really uh, as an experiment. I've never written for these two instruments together before. And so uh, uh, this is a pleasant surprise that it really, really works. And I really love that color. Um, thank you, Faso, for this wonderful opportunity. Thank you to all the players um, who practiced all the music for this uh, project um, and made it come to life. And thanks to my fellow composers. Congratulations to us all. I think all the works are wonderful, wonderfully composed and had a lot to say for something that is only a minute long. So congratulations, everyone.
Ooh, nice opening. Nice. Nice texture. Almost like a gamelan. Emotive. There you go. I love the combination of the harp and the kulinta. I love 7 8 time signature. Ooh, gorgeous. Gorgeous harmonies. There's a few. I'd love to see this. Few. I love fugues. Gorgeous. Oh my god. It sounds like a gong in there. Yes, palm slide. Lush harmonies. Gorgeous. Amazing. Nice, nice. Wow. Nice, Sonder. I really like how you started it uh, when you do the... Um, the first few bars, you, you establish the theme right away. It's the inversion of Bahai Kubo. And I could recognize it right away because I used the same inversion in mine. The use of extended techniques is very well incorporated here. Please teach me. Um, to be honest, it felt like a three to five minute piece because it, it, it took me somewhere else that I lost track of time. And very powerful stuff. Great work, Sander. It's so amazing how you were able to take just those four notes of Bahai Kubo and build an entire piece just using those four notes. Given that you inverted those four notes, um, for those not familiar with the term inversion, it just simply means taking those four notes and then flipping it vertically so that the shape would be inverted as well. Thank you to our composers and our musicians. If you enjoy this kind of video and want us to make more videos like this, let us know. We can invite other composers, we can use other melodies and even other instruments. A special thank you to David Bruce for inspiring us to do this kind of video. And thank you to RO3PH who edited this video and created all the graphics and animation. Please continue to support FASO in our mission to support emerging composers and Filipino-American music. And happy Filipino-American History Month this month of October. <laughs>